Hello, hello, and welcome back to uh, Tinkering with Jerd. We are in a fascinating part of the country. We're here in Cornwall exploring some disused copper and tin mines. Um, this entire landscape of, of Cornwall is dotted with these sorts of mines that, that fell into disuse and disrepair uh, in the 19th century. But that's neither here nor there. We're here to capture some aerial data. We're going to be flying the drone uh, and capturing data. That's our mission today. But we're going to do it a little bit differently. We have our, uh, ourselves a very exciting bit of kit that's going to make this a proper survey mission. So let's just jump into it. So what we're going to be doing differently this time around is we have some ground control points. Now these are standard in aerial surveys, you know, pop these on the ground, put a pin or, you know, in this case, you know, sometimes just sort of a, a, an X marks the spot on the ground, you spray paint it, whatever it is, um, you survey it and you're going to be able to georeference your, your author mosaics and your models that you produce. Uh, what we've done, however, is we have made our own. We've used our K1 Max to 3D print these and then used our CFS unit to churn them out production run style. Uh, you could print them without the CFS and just put a print pause into it. Um, but we've created this and we've created the sort of locking pin that goes directly into the middle of that that we're going to be using to survey. And when I say survey, I mean we are genuinely going to be surveying. We have our finally got our hands on a GNSS receiver provided by Singular XYZ. Um, now I've used you know, Leica Trimble and this stacks up right there with it. It is a fantastic bit of kit really nimble, really agile, love the fact that it's based on Android uh, as opposed to some of the bigger competitors which are still running on the back end of Windows, which is a fact, they freeze, it's horrible. This however is a really robust, awesome little bit of kit. Um, the Singular Pad software in here is, well, more for civil engineering applications, but we're going to be using it simply to record points on the ground, record our ground control points, and for that purpose, it is fantastic. We're going to get down to about a centimeter levels of accuracy uh, using um, you know, network RTK. We're going to be using NTRIP correction data to get us to that really holy grail level of accuracy that we, we, we need for this. So we're going to jump into this and it's going to be awesome. Um, our goal for right now is to be surveying our ground control markers um, so that when we send the drone up and we fly our mission and we start capturing photos, we, when we go into to process the data itself, we'll be able to you know, look down on our target. We've got the X, Y, and Z position of these points, and we'll be able to georeference and geo well, georeference our author mosaic that we're going to be creating. So we have an, an awesomely accurate uh, geotiff file at the end of it, as well as just a general model. Um, you know, awesome. So to, to capture the data in the first place, we're going to be surveying uh, in OSGB 36. Um, that's the national grid here in the UK. And ideally what we want to do is set our, set our uh, detail pole over the point and then have a bipod and then capture um, 180 second observation. Go out, set all our other targets, come back, do a second set of observations um, to account for satellite variability, things like that, and then average those two points. Um, we don't have a bipod with us, but uh, this does have an IMU. We have tilt compensation. And what's really awesome about this, this bit of kit, it's, it's, it's light. You know, you really feel like Gandalf, the surveyor, you know, <laughs> you know fantastic stuff. Um, and, and truth be told, even though we're not going to rely too much on the IMU itself, we are going to hold it steady for 180 seconds, do a single set of observations. So uh, yes, 
yeah, it's not necessarily going to be the most robust survey, but it is going to be accurate. You know, we're still going to be within the realms of potentially about two, three centimeters. Um, anything lower than that, I'm going to be super chuffed, but that's what we're going to, <laughs> we're going to aim for. Um, so that's where we're at. So we're going to go around, set all of our targets, and then get the drone up in the air and fly. So that's the mission. Let's see if it works out. So we made it back into my spare bedroom, and as you can see, things are looking a little bit different this time around. We have upped that production quality, or at least uh, we're, we're trying to do so. Um, our mission down in Cornwall was a resounding success. Um, it was very busy, very hot, but we found such an interesting site to, to do photogrammetry on. Uh, genuinely an awesome, awe-inspiring site. Felt like something out of Skyrim, to be honest with you, when you go and find Dwemer ruins. Um, and this genuinely felt like that as you were going around it. And being able to see it from the air and you know, really you know, <laughs> interrogate the site itself has been awesome. We did things very differently this time around, though. Um, we did it as more of a pure survey-related mission. We utilized um, our new GNSS equipment that we got from Singular XYZ. Um, not a sponsored video, mind you, um, but genuinely, the price to performance of this bit of kit um, is second to none. Genuinely, a very versatile uh, and awesome little bit of kit. And we're going to explore more of that in future videos as we get into you know, what is surveying, uh, different types of surveying, be it engineering surveying, land surveying, um, you know, archaeological surveying, things like that. And you know, most of it uh, starts with having GNSS uh, equipment and being able to to build up geospatial data of the of the world around you. Um, so yes, we'll explore that in future videos. But for right now, we have produced such an amazing little model. Um, you know, the texture of this thing is amazing. And for anyone who wants to uh, process something similar like this, uh, at least in Agisoft, um, I've got one of my previous videos where I, I do a deep dive on the step-by-step -step process on how to, to process the photogrammetry data, um, you know, get it prepped for, for um, you know, going into Blender and then using Blender um, to be able to make these models. But here we have just honestly awe-inspiring. I'm, I'm genuinely a loss for words because this is one of the best missions um, that I've conducted in a, in a very long while with, a, with kit that wasn't prohibitively expensive. The biggest thing that we, we did differently, apart from utilizing the GNSS equipment, uh, is, is giving DroneLink uh, another, another chance and actually comprehensively planning uh, our mission. And uh, you know, even though you don't necessarily need mission planning software to, to achieve results like that, it is a little bit more tricky when you are trying to capture a lot of different angles, um, you know, uh, quickly and, you know, trying to, to really think about the, the type of data that you're capturing, the amount of photos, um, the placement, position of those photos, things like that. So being able to mission plan and more important, being able to, you know, see and visualize um, how that planning is going to look um, when you actually start to fly the mission. Is, is amazing. And we did things, we did a, a full crosshatch mission, uh, taking 90 degree photos, you know, just straight down. Um, but then we, we did, an, uh, you know, two more, um, you know, crosshatch missions where we took uh, 55 and 45 degree angles. Um, and, you know, those, those gives us, you know, a little, little bit more of the oblique shots of, of the buildings um, themselves and, and can, you know, really get inside windows and things like that. Uh, and then we did two orbital missions um, you know, flying around with the camera locked at 45 degree angles, just taking photos um, as it orbited around it. And we did one, you know, 50 meters away from it and then one 100 meters away from it. And, you know, it's, it's turned out so cool. Um, I think the, the, the data that it's captured speaks for itself, to be honest with you. Um, a genuinely, genuinely awesome and, and awe-inspiring little model here um, that even as I, as I keep going back to it and, and spinning things around and looking inside the buildings and looking at it, it is an amazing, amazing, amazing model. Um, so really chuffed with that. But more importantly, we also you know, have created a very accurate model here. Um, the, what we did differently, obviously, is we've got the ground control points so we've included ground control points into this, and you know, we have to go through um, you know, each one of our photos to geotag. You can, you can get away with tagging a, you know, five per ground control point, and you know, the software will do a pretty good job of, of stitching things together thereafter. Um, but you, know, you can see the ground control points. You can see them uh, from the air, and they stand out. They are high contrast enough to be able to see. They're a little bit pixelated, so you know, they're... <laughs> A little bit of a challenge in that. And the only thing I would do differently this time around is the survey peg itself. Uh, I would actually 
you know, print that in black, have a little bit more high contrast uh, versus the the ground control point around it. Uh, and that way, I think you really would be able to to pinpoint because as we've gone through and, you know, done checkpoints and assess the accuracy, uh, being able to really see that that midpoint is, is so critical. Um, having said that, we have still produced a, a an author mosaic and a model here that is 2.3 centimeters accurate. We can get that lower, but that in of itself is amazing because, you know, when we've got this author mosaic here, um, you know, what we can do with it is put it into GIS. Uh, and when we put that into GIS and we can overlay that uh, on, onto a base map, uh, you can see the difference between satellite data and, and you know, the author mosaic data that we've collected here with the, with the drone. And, you know, the thing with uh, photogrammetry is it's a lot more dynamic. Uh, you know, satellite data, depending on, on the satellite you use and, and the sort of data that you're, you're, you're in, including into, into GIS, can be a little bit outdated, uh, not the most high resolution. This, however, certainly for, yeah, if you're an archaeologist or, you know, working on a construction site and, you know, you need to have large scale maps, um, you know, quite quickly, you know, updated week by week, you know, as, as things unfold, this is, this is, this is where uh, photogrammetry shines. And, you know, when you look at it like that, it's, it, it's turned out amazingly well. So very chuffed with that. But more importantly, we've also utilized our K1 Max um, to, and the CFS unit with it to produce a multicolored print um, of, the, uh, of the abandoned copper and tin mine. And it has turned out so, so, so cool. Um, you know, I did this at uh, just standard uh, layer settings, 0.2, uh, because it took a long, long time to print. I mean, this took um, about 14 hours or so to <laughs> from start to finish uh, and had 153 uh, layer changes. So it was a very intense model to print. And more than that, um, when you're actually in Creality print software um, and you're painting on your different uh, filament types, um, you know, I've had to go in and paint the parts, uh, you know, paint where the vegetation comes up, um, paint the buildings, you know, really, I spent a good couple of hours um, just trying to get this model um, to look cool. And honestly, I think it looks amazing. It is a fantastic, fantastic little model. Um, you know, I'm so chuffed. This is going to be on my mantle for years to come. Um, and as I go out to, to more sites and, and, and survey uh, more and more places, um, you know, be it on holidays or whatever, this is going to be my souvenirs from those places. Um, build them up and go, ah, oh, I remember this place. But for anyone who's into dioramas or, you know, model trains or who is... Yeah, again, a professional surveyor working on a construction site or an archaeologist or you know, anyone really, you know, being able to, to showcase you know, tangible uh, data is so, so, so cool and so I think really important because you know, it gives you a good idea of the, the landscape that you're, you're inter interacting with. Um, so I'm just chuffed to bits with it. But we didn't just print this model. Um, as amazing as this is, I decided... Well, I wanted to go lower resolution. So we printed another one at 0.08 mil resolution, um, utilizing uh, everyone's uh, stone PLA, um, which is a uh, sort of uh, multicolored single filament. Um, and it's also <laughs> turned out so amazing. I mean, just looking at it, it's like a desert scene, to be honest with you. Um, and another one that I'm just so chuffed with. I actually think this one, uh, in terms of the print quality, is is a little bit better. But it's, yeah, all together, they are... They're both just so cool in their own unique little ways. Uh, and being able to hold a site that I walked around, um, interact with it, see it, look at it, and feel like, you know, an all-empowering being, you know, sort of looking down, omnipresent on the landscape. This is what it's all about. Uh, <laughs> not really, but, you know, I waffle and I go on. Altogether, we had an amazing time. And we genuinely have produced some, some I think, really awesome results here. Um, and we're going to explore, as I say, more of it as we, as we venture forth, um, you know, going into more of the survey-related things uh, now that we have our GNSS receiver here. Um, and we're going to start to to explore more of what, what surveyors do. And I'm trying to to, to get myself on on some, some archaeological volunteering digs at the moment because um, I, I want to be able to survey on those sites again uh, as a professional archaeologist and slash surveyor. Um, you know, that itch really uh, is, is drawing me back to archaeology and I want to, and I think it would be interesting for, for everyone to see because, yeah, it's, it's a fun and exciting little world. But uh, also, our you know, CFS unit has performed flawlessly. Um, you know, yes, I had some issues with the cardboard spools uh, and, uh, you know, Creality did get back to me and say, well, basically don't use cardboard. And I've gone, 
uh, okay, yeah, fine. Um, you know, so I'm going to have to unwind and potentially get some plastic spools. But I only had one issue with that, so it's not really the biggest issue. But altogether, yeah, the, the K1 Max performed once again flawlessly and did its job. So I'm chuffed a bit. Um, so yeah, hopefully you all have uh, have learned something and you found this video a little bit interesting to, to see and yeah, like the, the new <laughs> format and styling that we've chosen to go with a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I'll see you in the next one.